which I was interested that each marple is directed by someone different. Was there ever a conversation to have the same director across them all? No. No, it was, they were always, each, each was, you know, was treated as a completely separate entity. Um, it wasn't the sense of a, it wasn't like doing a series of, you know, there was no sense of a, a continuing story. I mean, the only continuity was the, you know, was the character, you know, the, the characters, the various regular, you know, there's Joan and, and Inspector Slack and, you know, the, the various ones which were, were in, um, which is, um, no, but each, each story, because I mean, as books, I mean, they don't, they don't cross the fur, you know, you never get, I mean, there's a, I think there's one or two where you... Jason Raphael, you know, Jason Raphael swaps in Nemesis and... Oh yes, Nemesis and, yes, uh, yes, Ma I mean, yes, and Caribbean Mystery, yes. Yeah, I mean, that was, it was quite interesting, that, it that, was that was, <laughs> when we, um, when we, uh, well, we didn't, before we did Caribbean in Nemesis, we did that one, and Raphael was only an, a relatively small part in that. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and because he... Uh, and, he but, died uh, in the first five minutes, yes. <laughs> more or less, yes. Um, but so when we got to the Caribbean mystery, I mean, <clears throat> that was... Again, I mean, this thing you talk, because the Caribbean mystery... <clears throat> That was, he was also, he was a film director as well. Um, I mean, he brought a very, again, a very different um, um, style. Because the Caribbean mystery, um, we, I mean, was, ended up in the, um, um, the Italian film, it was um, film festival on the, which they have every year. Yes. Um, I can't remember the name of the town, but it. Uh, no. We went. Uh, I went out, um, and uh, we had. You know, it was shown as part of uh, because it was treated as a as a feature and basically as a feature film. There. I had to make special prints for that because uh, um, just to briefly, uh, a cinema film has a high contrast print and television in those days had a low contrast print because our tellies were the old style of telly and you couldn't have a, a range of densities as great as you can on a screen. So we always had to regrade the films to send them out for these special showings. And indeed for the BAFTA shows or the Bijou or the mm -hmm. um, the one we did before it, which was called The Roxy, where we'd take oh, the film. Oh, you've got a the there, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I, uh, yes, I thought, no, I'm not, I was going to get all my papers on. I thought, no, no, let's just rely on the memory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But you mentioned the, you know, the Caribbean mystery. How did that work taking, obviously, you know, it's a book, but taking Marple abroad? Was, you know, the local community, were they sort of very aware of, what you were doing, or was it just some sort of funny British film crew? Oh no, no, well, no. I mean that. I mean that was quite a major operation that that one, um, because we filmed it in the actual hotel where she wrote the book. I mean, it's set. That is where she wrote the book about. She was staying in the uh, in that hotel, um, and that is where it's set. And we actually shot it in. It's still, you know, it was still there and hadn't changed very much. Were the owners still the same? Uh, because there was some talk about the owners being there for a long oh, time. Oh yes, 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 yes. The same family were still, um, still at it. It was, um, I mean, it was, um, no, but it, it, it was um, when we were, it was, I mean, those, those sort of hotels were little closed communities in terms of, um, the island. I mean, they, you didn't have to go out of, you know, everything was supplied within. So the contact with um, the, outside world. the outside world was very, very, uh, sorry, something's just come up on my... 
Oh. Unlimited limits. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you might get cut in four minutes' time, it said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, so that was our, um, you know, the main thing about it. We couldn't, I mean, literally, we had to, we, we, that's where John Walker, you know, our wonderful John Walker, the director of the cameraman, he, because we couldn't take any equipment, I mean, we could only take very basic equipment. There was no, we couldn't take any lighting out there at all. Um, and finding any on the island was, was quite, a, we did manage to achieve some, but he, I mean, like, you know, well, you know, John, when we worked together, he, he was my cameraman for nearly everything I did after that. Um, he um he he did wonders with you know natural light i mean particularly when you had the rainstorm and had to bring the scene inside um, oh yes yes that's uh, right that, that. Yeah. <coughs> one thing you haven't talked about is the writers trevor bowen wrote the first one i remember and then finished up writing a lot of them down the series and you asked there alex about you know the continuity of a director between all episodes but the continuity was quite often in the writing even though we'd have Alan Plater and uh, Julie Hyman others in there there was a feeling but with Trevor as a sort of linchpin did, did I understand that right George? Um, yes no when when I took over and I mean getting writers actually that was quite interesting um, I the a lot of, quite a few of the writers I approached because I wanted to keep, you know, the standard of the writing as high as possible. Um, were because uh, I did actually ask Alan Plater to do do another one, but he said no. He'd done he'd done his Christie. He was not prepared to do another one. <laughs> that was Murder Is Announced, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Was it Murder Is Announced? Murder Is Announced. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, but um, but Trevor, because um, I just Trevor, as you say, Trevor um, became the the sort of backbone of the whole thing because he, of all of the writers, really I think really understood what they were about. I mean I don't know I just felt he was much more sympathetic, pathetic to the whole the whole mm. Marvel. Mm. And and the period and important to keep it within you know yes. within the when it was set rather than mm. push it you know either way which a lot of the other ones you know just played willy nilly with uh, mm. with time and thing because she was she was of of, of her time uh, the whole yes. village the concept of the the woman in the village who who knows everything. You know, and it's all through gossip. I mean, you know, it's that yeah. is. That but is, that's what I mean about the books. That's what it says on the page, and that's what for the majority of those films. And I don't think I'd single any out that didn't. You felt that they come off the page, and I've seen several times I've read reviews about the whole thing, and in particular this set of twelve films we did but they were off the page and the modern marples i'm not going to criticize them because i haven't seen all of them but it doesn't appear to be that they're off the page and certainly rutherford and um, lansbury weren't off the page these 12 films were off the page that must have pleased the christie estate a great deal oh yeah well we um rosalind as i say the the daughter she um i mean she was incredibly protective of her mother's work I mean, she wasn't. Um, she we we, did, we consulted. I mean, she was. <clears throat> she was a you know. She had no actual you know, legal inter you know right on. She they'd given the rights to the BBC, but um, you know out of courtesy and just you know because she she cared about the work, um, and. Um, and it was, I mean, it was she that when, you know, she produced the letter that uh, Agatha Christie had written, you know, the, to Joan saying that, you know, that she you one day you'll do it. her Miss Martha one day after having seen her in the theatre. Um, 
and began, she was she was so pleased that uh, and she and Joan you know became became very close friends and she used to come and visit she always came to visit the location uh, and yes was, that's where I met her on a couple of occasions when I brought stuff down to the location yeah, mm. yeah. Um, and um, so we and that was that was the whole thing was to try and be true to the books I mean there were uh, there were odd occasions when we had to tweak a little because um, some of sometimes Agatha did she did cheat a little I mean like in a book you can you know you can just not mention something <laughs> uh, or something which you can't see but because we was we were seeing you yes. had to sort of be careful <laughs> But that's Otherwise, why the quality of the writing is so important that it yes. brings it into the new format, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know it's a very skilled thing in creating, you know, a script, a, 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 a visual version of a novel or a book. Yeah. yeah. Um, particularly a detective thing. Um, yeah. No. So Trevor became, you know, and because um, I didn't, um, I didn't have a script editor or Marvel. Um, because I mean, because Guy, I mean Guy was also a writer and had been a scriptwriter. So he, when we started, we never we did you know there was no need for one. And when I took over, I mean I felt um, I um, you know I didn't need another another person on the committee so to speak. I rather dealt directly. I, I mean directly with the writer. I mean that was that was important. So it became just me, the writer, and the director. As it was a much neat, tighter yes. way of working. Um, so, yeah, well, that was that was my. You have a favourite film of the twelve, George? Oh, they all have. They all have. Um, I. I. I don't know. I. No, I am um, no. It changes, Bernard. <laughs> now that's what I was wanting you to say because if you watch Caribbean Mystery, that's your favourite film. You, you watch Murder Is Announced, that's your favourite film. That's the whole point. That's why I thought you'd yeah. say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I probably know you too well, George. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, and also it because they were. I mean, we were doing them um, with the masterpiece theatre. You know the American, yeah. so that I mean they they went they were hugely successful in America. I mean yeah. the 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 fan mail and everything Joan was getting from a you know across the the pond. Yeah. She she became the you know it's interesting because of as you say the Angela Lansbury and thing, but Joan I think managed to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, you know, get knock her off the. <laughs> it was the only American nomination I ever got was for the uh, body in the library, which I can't. Yeah. <laughs> didn't go anywhere, but it was a nomination. I was quite pleased at the time. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm. Um, I wish um, Joan had. You know, I. I feel. I wish she'd got a something like a bath or something for for Marvel. Yeah. I always felt that, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, p part of, because they became the, they became, towards the end, they became the Christmas, the Christmas film. I mean, I think it, 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 um, I don't know whether that made any difference, but it. Uh, I think the answer is it was series serials in the BBC and not plays. Uh, that that was a schism between the two sides of drama in the BBC, oh, yeah. and the plays had their set of editors and photographers and um, people in series serials doing you know more interesting material like Bergerac and Shoestring and whatever. And of course, Marple, they were series serials, and it was remembering rather like the um, Oscars, BAFTA is from the people who are belonging who voted. And they're going to vote for the plays. <laughs> well, well, I'm glad. I'm glad you said. I mean, I've I've been thinking about you know, I mean, recently I've had various rethinkings of my time at the BBC, and I was always 
And that was something I was very aware of then, that there was a, a them and us. I mean, plays, they were based up in the television centre. And we were down the road in Shepherd's Bush, you know. <laughs> Says were, it all, man. Says it all. <laughs> we were the equally, the plays were cut in the upper echelon at Ealing and we were all down on the ground floor. <laughs> yeah, we were, uh, yeah. There, was a, there was a definite um, sense that they were, the, and it, I don't know if it was a conscious thing, but it just, it does, as you write about the people who were working, you know, people wouldn't work, didn't, the idea of working on a, a popular series or or even a you know the bi weeklies were oh dear 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 you know they, they were just churning out you know pop stuff you know, mm. and, you know if you look at the actual screen time the the actual air time that the departments were producing i mean it's um it's quite amazing I mean, the, but the have TV a look at the, the audience numbers too oh yes yeah absolutely and that's to me it was great to have that amount of audience for the product that I was working on for you for a, a very long time, uh, 84 through to 94 when I left the BBC on various products. And back before that, I, I, I worked for you in, in bits and pieces, but it's just <laughs> that 10 years, um, we had big audiences, massive audiences. Yes, absolutely. Yes, it, it's quite interesting when now you, talk, the, you hear about not, People getting excited about audio. Oh, we've got something. You think, hold on, we've got twice that. <laughs> One of my, and this is a side story, I'm sorry, I'll be very quick. When I moved to Australia, and obviously I wanted to start work over here, after all, Channel 7 had known us both for um, being a, a bit of money on these series and also on Bergerac. So I got to work at uh, Channel 7 and I did a quite interesting documentary program and they got very excited because they had 210,000 viewers in Sydney. And I didn't look very excited. And they said, you don't seem very excited, the lady director. And they said, my last transmission had 18 and a half million. <laughs> <laughs> she never asked me to do anything again. I think I wasn't the right sort of person. I was obviously team <laughs> oh. But There you go. Yeah. <laughs> After the success of the first Marvel, did you suddenly find that you had all sorts of other productions asking for you to work on them? You know, was it quite prestigious to then say, I am working on that within the BBC? I'm, I can't remember. I mean, I don't think so. I mean, um, it was... Um, when, it, it, when it started, it was another... You know, it was a new venture but uh, you know it uh, it only it was only once it sort of started transmitting you know the the the, the response to it was that uh, um but no i never i'm quite honestly i never really thought in those terms at all i i mean i was just doing what i i mean i it was for me it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I mean, partly when I was, before I actually took over, it was also um, um, being in a position to work with some, um, I mean, the, the, as I say, the, the Silvio and Roy, and, and I mean, I had worked with David Giles before, because I actually started um, <clears throat> In the on the foresight when he directed the foresight saga, I was the AFM um, for the foresight saga, so I knew David. <laughs> but, That's when we met the first time because I cut half of an episode. In fact, the very last episode film, because the uh, editor was sick, so I, I uncreditedly cut the last episode with the thing falling on uh, on Soames at the end. There. Oh, I did. I, I, I didn't. I don't remember. You that. were in the cutting room. I was, and you <laughs> <laughs> oh, I go a long way back, me old darling. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. When well, we filmed that because we we did the, we did all that at, at at Ealing. We filmed all that. It was interesting. That was the burning, you know, when the thing. Yeah. We we burnt the the gallery down outside and did the exterior inside. 
we built the set. We shouldn't be talking about Foresight Saga anyway, should we? What about Marvel? Come on, <laughs> sir, bring us down to the bring us down to where we're supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because that was well, uh, Ealing then I mean we had we still had the lot, that little lot at Ealing, you know, with the with the old um um all these little towers that he shunted around, which uh, um and then um, when we built the, the the gallery interior as a step so we could actually set fire to it because we couldn't do it inside the studio. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Well thank you for reminding me of that, Bernard. <laughs> <I'm old. laughs> oh dear. It's like when I first met Robert Banks Stewart because he was the writer on um, Dr. Finley's case book, which was one of my first cuts. So, you know, uh, way back, 35 mil black and white. So, been been around Ealing Studios for a very long time. Yes. <laughs> but, Bernard, I was interested that you know normally, you know, as BBC staff, you're allocated something to edit, and you know, in a week, you might be working on five or six different shows. Would you have been solely on Marple at the time, or would it have been again another one of those jobs that you allocated during the week? Um, because I was probably the only supervising editor on series for a period of time, on the middle set of Marple, I was also doing a series called Call Me Mister of 10 episodes for Robert Banks Stewart. I was helping with the Bergerac series that I wasn't doing, series five, because I'd done one to four and then subsequently six onwards. Um, and I was helping on that because uh, there were complicated opticals and I was helping with that and doing the Marple and um, uh, 86 was a very, very hard year. I decided it wouldn't be like that. I again, only supervised two at a time, which was sometimes the Bergerac and the Marple at the same time. Um, so yeah, because I was a specialist, if you like, in that format, I did get lots of the same um, uh, but it came from the original edit base I was a, a film editor came up through the ranks as a on current affairs and then major documentaries music programs started doing drama before I was even the full editor because drama in those days was sequences and it was totally unimportant the only important thing in the BBC was the documentary so oh anybody can put that together because they've got a director and so they give it to a art new film editor, which is why I got my love of cutting drama and then was shunted for five years into current affairs and then got back to Warship on 74, which we discussed about two weeks ago. And that put me back into drama and that seemed to score because while I was on Warship, I was made a chief film editor. And then two years later, the guy who set up Target didn't want to do series two and invited me to do it and so I did Target then Shoestring then Bergerac and then I was in the right place when Guy was looking for somebody to front his series and that's how I came to be on it and the rest was as they say very very long history. <laughs> yes yeah. well and it, <clears throat> but also it was after that that I I made sure I had you on my. That's why. I, I, yeah, I did Alan team. Mysteries with George. I did <laughs> Alan Mysteries and Bergerac for George. We were really very busy, and that is wonderful. So, it wasn't just the Marple set. It was the other set of things that made our relationship really work. But, uh, is there anything we've missed about Joan and the programmes that uh, because we got sidetracked because we're professionals? <laughs> Well, we've talked about directors, writers, cast, but I wanted to ask about the music. Where did Ken the, Howard. Yeah, Ken the, Howard. Where did the choice of composer come from, George? Was that someone you'd known before? Oh, that, was, that was Guy. Um, it, it's fascinating about that because it was... Um, I... Because he, he, again, he was a, fr he, he was a friend of Guy's. Um, but it was, I think it was well into uh, when we were working on, on, on the marble that I discovered he and I were both at Edinburgh University at the same time. <laughs> and he actually, he, he, he um, was um, 
part of a, a singing duo called Eva and Ken, who had appeared in one of the, uh, it was called Edinburgh 1960. It was a big review that the university <laughs> used to do. And they appeared as the speciality act, as a, as a double act. They were, they were actually, um, um, you know, they were actually, what, they appeared on Scottish television and, and radio then. But I, I mean, I've actually found the program for that thing. And there's a photograph of Ken <laughs> looking very, very young, a very young man. Um, and I, I mean, I, have, I, I, I remember, I do remember him, but relating that uh, character to this um, mm. composer. <laughs> He was thematic. He, he would choose a little theme for each of the characters. And one of the key things for my feeling about the Marple series that George produced and Jai before him was that every individual character was very recognisable. I saw a more modern one with a different Marple and it didn't matter to me. What did matter was that I couldn't remember who the characters were, because they all looked alike. All three women were all glossy and lovely, but I couldn't tell who was who. And you nearly never had that on a, on a, our marbles, as I like to think of them. <laughs> you, you, um, you knew who each character was, and there was no confusion. And therefore, I found that very good, that I always knew who was going. And if I'd worked on a film and then saw the modern version of it and couldn't work out who was who, there's something wrong for me. But maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. Yeah, yeah. No, the, yeah, you're right. I mean, we had all the, you know, we had the Marple theme, we had, you know, you know, all the characters. That was how Ken worked. I mean, he, I suppose, he was more of a classical uh, composer than, than, I mean, it was interesting doing the marble and doing Bergerac with with you know the two different yes, yes. musical talents um, yes. uh, both in their own way extremely good Ray uh, Ray Russell who was oh, the composer yeah. on on much of the Bergeracs although the main themes originally was George Fenton mm. um, they um, they were in their right mould for the jobs that yeah, they were yeah. doing. I, I like the particularly interesting themes that Ken put to it. It's always a little bit up front, a little bit ealing. I like that because mm. that's what mm. we need. You could hold back the character but let the music yeah. bring it forward. Yeah, it's yeah it was um, also, I mean, I remember when we had, when we did, um, well, <coughs> it was uh, Pocket of Rye, when mm. Ken got, um, oh, Alan Jones as mm. a very young, boy to sing yes. you know uh, sing as long Which, uh, on the recording yeah. session guy yeah. said it was like singing on tiptoe yeah yeah he, he, I, he i heard the track come in when he we laid yeah. it again no i remember because we that was it was we then we at the bbc had its own recording studio for the musical recording studio then and i uh, remember when alad came in you know this very young mm. boy and we mm. He's uh, quite a, interesting. Uh, he, you know, he went on to become who he you know, famous. Yes. Then he was. Well, once they've been on Marple, mate, they're famous. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, they were, I mean, just in terms of it, the whole program for me had. I mean, it had a a sort of a very. Oh, sort of magical we had a wonderful family I mean, feeling of of all i mean for me it 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 did have a very much uh, it was the first time i felt it was like being back in the theater with a company where you know you all it was a there was no there was a mixture i mean socially i mean one became friends with such a lot of the the people associated with the you know, you were you were, you didn't just go to work and that was it, and then you went. Somehow the con, you know, you you carry the whole thing carried. Um, it was very, no, we all became very much part of of the the, the idea of what we were doing. 
and it's still running here in Sydney. Channel Nine's Gem has just been running the our Marvel films. Lovely. It, yeah. it ran. Um, oh, which was it? It was uh, yes, it was Caribbean Mystery ran last All week. Right, on yeah. Channel Nine. Um, and they don't fiddle around with it; they just stick it in the middle of the screen for the three. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yes, yes, no, because I, I still keep getting the residuals from Marple. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Marple. <laughs> and I don't start me on that because chief film editors and editors don't get residuals. No, no, no sorry, Marinette. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very much, but it it it, it helps. <laughs> And I think I know the answer to this, but what is it you think about your version of Marple, which has such a lasting legacy? It's Joan. Yeah. I mean, Joan. yeah. One word. Yeah, Joan Hicks. And yeah. she, as I said earlier on, you see her on the screen, mute. First time you ever see her, she's off the page. She's going to be wonderful, and she was. Yeah, well, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, not just Joan. I think give us credit, Barnard. We were all working because of Joan. Oh yes. Uh, like, I'm, I'm sure. trying not to be self-aggrandizing here, but no, yes, no, it, <laughs> no. it wouldn't have been the same without us, would it? <laughs> no, 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 no. We, she, she became the the uh, the purpose. We were there was to mm. serve her, Marple, and to do the best we could. That's why, you know, I, I was determined to keep together as many of the people as I could. Who and I that's could. why I was able to get the best editors and assistants and, uh, and dubbing editors available mm. to us, the Jerry Leons, the, you know, the Graham Walkers, and, uh, and, Pete, and Paul Garrick, who co-cut Caribbean Mystery with me. Those people wanted to be on Marple mm. and they wanted to be part of it. And I think that's just what you're really hinting, but it, it is not just in your shooting family, but it was in the post-production family as well, that feeling of, yes, we want to be doing this, you know. And that just, um, in that little note I showed you earlier, Francis, what lovely times we had um, working yeah. on one, one pair of films, you know and joining the family for that yes yeah, it's yeah. very much that. Yeah. well i think on that note all that remains for me is to say thank you very much to both of you for talking about any obviously a very special production not only for yourselves but as us as viewers so thank you for your time both of you it's a pleasure, <laughs> pleasure. Total, pleasure. total pleasure it's great to see you again george and i know uh, <laughs> this has been a great room meeting <laughs> yes it has <laughs>